In this video, I'm going to try and answer the question, why should you learn TypeScript when we already have JavaScript? In order to properly understand the benefits of TypeScript, we need to first take a look at JavaScript. If you aren't familiar with JavaScript, then don't worry. You don't need to know any JavaScript code to follow along. All right, so we have this function called popup, which will show a popup to the user. The popup has a customizable message and has some options. So far, so good? Well, not quite. We've already ran into a problem with this function, and it's the first line of code. So what is a message anyway? We can probably assume that it's some text data because that would make sense that we're going to show a pop-up. What about this options here? That could be anything. How do we set the options? What options are available? What happens if we don't set any options? What if we set too many options? We just don't really know. We don't have any information at all about this function other than it's called pop-up and has a message and option as parameters. So in order to use it, we'll either need to read the code for the function or hope that somebody wrote documentation for it. And that is up to date, of course. Just for fun, we're going to fully expand the code for the pop-up function. I know it's too small to read, and that's fine, because we're not going to be reading all the code. We only need to look at these four lines right here. So these four lines set up the default options. If we try using the functions without any options, then we'll get these defaults. This is useful information because now we know the available options, sort of. We know there is a kind option, and we know that the default is info. This is probably what kind of pop-up we can display. Since we can make informational pop-ups, maybe we can make error pop-ups or warning pop-ups too. We don't know though because there actually isn't any documentation for this example function. So we would need to read the code further to figure out if there are other kinds of pop-ups and how to use them. We also have this timeout function here, which likely means how long the message is displayed on screen. The number is 5,000, which seems like a lot. Are those in minutes, seconds, milliseconds? They're probably going to be in milliseconds because 5,000 seconds is over an hour. If we are just using this function, then this is sort of okay. In this imaginary scenario, we don't really need anything besides informational pop-ups, so we don't need to dive further into the code. It's safe to assume that the timeout is in milliseconds, so we can change that to another value if we wanted. This is fine as a consumer of the function. We'll actually be able to use this code and probably get an informational pop-up to work. But what if we were the person who actually had to write and maintain this function? If we were the ones writing this function, then we would set our defaults here in the beginning, marked in blue. And then we would write the functionality to make the pop-ups here in red. This makes sense because once we have the option set, we can make the pop-up, except this part in red doesn't actually make the pop-up. Remember how we weren't exactly sure what kinds of pop-ups were available, and we didn't know if 5,000 was in minutes or milliseconds? Well, there needs to be code to check that, and that's what these lines marked with red are doing. So we have our five lines to set the defaults, which is fine because we want to be able to use this function with defaults. And then we have 23 lines to check everything else. This is called boilerplate code. It helps us get where we need to go but it doesn't actually do the thing we're trying to do, which is to just make a pop-up. This little tiny part at the bottom is where our code to make the pop-up is actually supposed to go. There's nothing here yet. Let's continue. We should also write some tests to make sure that our function properly rejects broken options and invalid messages. Here on the right, we have six tests. These are used to make sure that the function accepts the arguments correctly. For example, the tests will check to make sure that the function works as expected, if we give it a negative timeout duration, or if we don't give a message, or if we try to make an unsupported kind of pop-up. I programmed this function to produce an error in all of these situations. If we add up the code marked in red, then we get 59 lines of code. Remember, we haven't written any functionality yet to actually make a pop-up, and we already have 23 lines of boilerplate code and six test cases. There is no functional code here, and there are zero tests to make sure that the pop-up actually works. The test cases are here just to make sure we can actually call this function properly. So we have five lines of usable code and 59 lines of code that don't actually do any pop-up related things. This code is also only useful for this one function, so none of these 59 lines contribute to any other part of the code base. So that's the situation writing JavaScript code. What about TypeScript? Here's the same function. We still have our five lines to set default values, but we reduced all the boilerplate in this function down to zero lines. You'll notice here we do have a few extra things on the function line, 
we set this message to be a string, and that could be any regular text. In this options here, we take a look at our JavaScript version. Our pop-up options just indicates options, but our TypeScript version has options and this pop-up options text right there. And we'll be taking a look at that shortly. The defaults here indicate that we are using some kind of pop-up options. And again, it lists out the kinds. One interesting note about the TypeScript version is we know that this five second, 5,000 is in milliseconds because it says so right there. So already just looking at a few lines of code, we can see much clearer how we're supposed to use this function. And all the documentation is just right here. It tells us what's going on. Here is the complete code listing in TypeScript. This is almost identical to the JavaScript code. It still checks to make sure that the pop-up has all the correct options, and it still makes sure that the millisecond timeout is correct as well. Remember how I mentioned that the JavaScript version would produce an error if anything was wrong? It's actually not possible to make the TypeScript version produce an error. That's the only functional difference between the TypeScript code and the JavaScript code. So the TypeScript code still has all the same checks as the JavaScript version, takes less code, requires fewer tests, and some of the code that's marked here in green is actually reusable across the rest of the code base. Here's a quick comparison of the numbers. Overall, TypeScript used 38% less code in this particular example. There's also another huge advantage that TypeScript has over JavaScript. Since the information needed to call the pop-up was encoded into the type system, we get live suggestions in our code editor as we type our code. Here are just a few examples of the pop-ups that you may see when working with the sample from the previous slides. We can get the number of fields that are allowed to be part of the pop-up options. We can get a listing of all possible kinds of pop-ups that we're able to create. And we get a listing of all the data that's required to actually call the function. All of this makes development much quicker and easier since you don't have to guess what data you need when working with the function. It all just pops up right as you type code. Your code will also be significantly more reliable since all of this is being checked automatically every time you hit a key. So if writing less code and having it work with a higher level of reliability sounds like something you could benefit from, you're in the right place.